excited about you, Ricky, and we're interested in hearing uh, about what uh, you have in store. So with that, I introduce you to Ricky Gill. Well, thanks, Michael, for the introduction. It's good to see some old friends here, the mayor and Ken, and, um, and obviously John. I have to tell you, the real price of admission, though, uh, what made it all worth it is seeing Mike Jorgensen not on a golf course. True. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm thrilled to be here, Pat. Thanks for the invitation. I'll try. I think brevity is a virtue, so I'm going to try to keep it concise for you, and I'll let you know what I'm up to. and. Uh, why it may or may not make sense. So, um, as Mike referred to, there's a, I feel like I owe you all an explanation. Uh, the story has preceded me a little bit, and um, I think there's some rational basis for, for what we're up to. Um, a little bit about me, personally. Uh, Lodi is where I call home. This is ground zero for me. I'm born and raised here. Um, and I think that uh, one, one aspect of our identity does tie into what we're up to, which is there's a vacuum uh, for some indigenous leadership at the congressional level. I think it's a kind of a statement of democracy now in California in the Central Valley. We don't have a state or federal legislator who lives in San Joaquin County. And, uh, you know, Bill Berryhill and Tom are good friends of ours. Um, and there, there's some representation on the outside that I think is, has done a commendable job. But there still is a little bit of a vacuum here. There's a void that needs to be filled. And when we are feeling uh, the pinch on so many different fronts, whether it's education, foreclosures, economic revitalization or renewal, there's a real imperative for some authenticity and some leadership that, that is pounding the pavement we are. Um, my background is that I'm a first generation American, so my folks had a real itinerant road to this country. Um, it started in India, and my dad actually, uh, who's now a physician farmer, that's the designation we give him, he, uh, he grew up in Africa, and his real ambition was to go into ag. And, um, so he is now wearing multiple hats here, but San Joaquin Valley has been our family's refuge for longer than I've been around, about 35 years. And um, in the sense I get from my folks and from a lot of people who I consider trusted friends, is that this community um, has, seen, has seen better days than it is today. Um, and there was a notion that people could transcend industries and the dream was alive and well 15, 10, 20 years ago. And uh, we need to take some directed steps to whether it's on, on reform measures or on basic substance of economic policy to get this place moving again. And I got the sense um, that there has been some indifference uh, in the congressional ranks around this area to basic quality of life. Um, I thought, at least my diagnosis, which is also shared by some people in this community, is that the last election was really litigated and debated in the last 20 days over the TV airwaves. And the Valley didn't have its voice. We were sort of deprived of our seat at the table. And people wanted an authentic, long-running discussion about what San Joaquin County is going to look like. Um, but I guess that brings me to some of the attributes that I suspect we bring to the table. Um, we've, we've diagnosed that there's a hardship here. Um, and I noticed there's sort of an interesting tapestry of issues. And they all interact with each other. So uh, we have a jobs crisis, which is confirmed by sobering statistics. Having an unemployment rate that is 20% that's double the national average, should probably give us impetus to do something about it. We have an education uh, challenge. I don't call it a problem. I think that's a negative spin. We've got a challenge, and it's not insurmountable, but we've got to attract um, high-quality charter schools through philanthropic measures. We've got to introduce accountability, uh, and we've got to step up to the plate on a whole host of education issues to make this place a fertile ground, not just for the next generation, but for jobs to relocate. A lot of these Silicon Valley companies, I notice, have some trepidation moving here because there's some reservations about the education system. So these problems go hand in hand. Uh, my background, frankly, uh, despite um, being a young person, it's something I willingly concede, my real exposure in public life to this point has been through public education. So I served on the California State Board of Education. That was a consequential time. That was. Uh, um, I served seven years ago on the state school board, but we defended the high school exit exam. We fought for charter schools, and we really took some quantum leaps forward um, on the standards-based front. I mean, there's a temptation always in education to relax standards, and we tried to hold the line to the best of our ability. 